And now our other big focus. Well, this diplomatic partnership is emerging as a defining relationship of the 21st century world order. Modi's now famous camaraderie with the Saudi crown prince and the emir of Qatar has the potential of ushering in an era of peace and stability in a world filled with conflict and power tussles. Well, the Prime Minister's latest visit to the UAE and Qatar has brought to focus the shared ideals and common goals of India and the Middle East in times of war. Can India and the Middle East drive a new world order sans the traditional global powers? Here's a report. A royal sheikh, one of the world's richest amirs, and Prime Minister Modi's bid to bridge the Gulf, redefining ties with West Asia. New Delhi looks to carve a road to the new world order, passing through what was still now just a transit point, the Middle East. The geopolitics of the India-Middle East-Europe economic corridor has not gone unnoticed. India's latest Gulf push, backed by the US, is being seen as a move to counter China's expanding Belt and Road Initiative. But the Modi-Muhammad camaraderie and India's growing bond with West Asia could be a game-changer in diplomacy at the world stage. आप लोगों के बीच आया हूं तब हमेशा लगा है कि जैसे मैं अपने ही घर में आया हूं अपने ही परिवार के ही सदस्यों के साथ मैं मैं मिलने आया हूं ऐसा मैं हमेशा अनुभव कर रहा हूं Today, Your Excellency, the Prime Minister, our region is passing through a difficult stage. But with our relationship with you, we are building on it with many hopes, and we look forward to a future with India that rises up to our ambitions. The India Gulf alignment is well timed amid two raging wars that could expand into regional conflicts and polarize the world like never before. So, combining the impacts of the war in Ukraine, the decline in transit to the Panama Canal, and the situation in the Red Sea, we are seeing delays, higher costs, higher emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. With differences between the West and the Middle East growing by the day, Qatar has emerged as a key mediator between Israel and Hamas, managing to achieve the impossible task of a ceasefire in Gaza that extended at least twice. We have received a response from Hamas regarding the general framework of the agreement of the parties regarding hostages. This response calls for optimism and the response will be delivered to the Israeli side. With this, Qatar has positioned itself as a power broker in a region rife with conflict. Qatar's balancing act also reflective of India's diplomatic tightrope amid global conflicts, from championing its historical relationship with Russia to factoring in its ties with Israel as a crucial defense and economic ally. The common goal, however, an end to conflicts to enable stability and free trade. It was with this aim that India achieved consensus on the Russia-Ukraine war in the G20 communique, bridging global differences seen by many as insurmountable. India's emergence in the Indo-Pacific and Qatar and UAE's Middle East dominance could pave the way for a diplomatic order free of Western or Chinese supremacy. From oil, defense, trade, tech to cooperation on land and sea, India's alliance with the Gulf is a long-standing diplomatic partnership between diverse yet like-minded nations whose time has come. Vedant Agarwal for NDTV. And joining me on India Global this week on this very important debate, I'm being joined by Dr. Mohan Kumar, a former Indian envoy to Bahrain. Also with me, Kamar Aga, a senior Middle East expert. Thanks very much for joining us on India Global. Well, going across to you first, Dr. Kumar, uh, there has been a certain shift in the way India looks at the Middle East. You know, earlier it was just a transit point, but now they're being looked at as key allies. How do you see this shift? Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. I think the, if you ask me to indicate the transformational diplomacy that the current government of Prime Minister Modi has achieved, uh, one definitely at the top of the list would be the Gulf, followed by perhaps Israel and then the 
other countries. But really, it is the Gulf where I think the Prime Minister has combined two things. One, he has invested a lot in terms of what I choose to call personal diplomacy. He has made it a point to repeatedly visit those countries, get to know the sovereigns well, and taken time to understand the political dynamics of the region. This is not easy, but I think you will realize to many of these countries, no past prime minister from India had gone more than once in 10 years. So for him to make seven repeat visits to the UAE and to take the trouble to go the second time to Qatar, make sure that he meets the sovereigns on the sidelines and of every absolutely. single multilateral meeting. I think that is what has resulted... And what you said about personal diplomacy as well, Dr. Kumar, that's very interesting also. Uh, Mr. Agha, come in on this. Uh, do you see a certain sense of alignment between India and the Gulf, whether it is about, uh, uh, you know, brokering peace in key regional conflicts or about, you know, the shared uh, goal of free trade and stability? Yes, of course, there is a marked shift, you know, and uh, for two reasons. One is uh, our connectivity projects, which suggests, you know, now we'll be connected. India, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and then Israel. This is a very important, you know, and which goes uh, beyond Europe up to. So this project, you know, it attracts uh, uh, the Gulf countries as well. And the Gulf countries would be connected from India to Southeast Asia, uh, because very soon we will be having India, uh, Myanmar, Thailand, connectivity program, you know, the rail and, uh, rail and road uh, uh, connectivity yes. would come, you know. So it is a very important, you know, step which the Prime Minister has taken. There were two, three main uh, focus points. One, trade and investment. And secondly, you know, the Indians working in this area. Absolutely. And, and uh, uh, you know, Mr. Aga, if I can come and interrupt you, uh, you know, last 30 seconds to each of you. And if you can talk about how India and the Middle East could shape the new world order in the 21st century. Mr. Aga, to you first, and then I'll go to Dr. Kumar. Uh, there is a lot of scope in this, you know, because the Arabs are now look towards India. They have a look east policy in which India... Uh, Japan, South Korea becomes very important. Then secondly, you know, our strength, we have a large number of uh, workers uh, uh, who are uh, computer savvy, English speaking, technical class, which attracts yes. them. 75 uh, per, uh, lakhs Indians are working in this so, region. So there's a, there's, there's a possibility for the UAE as well, vis-a-vis -vis India. But Dr. Kumar, yeah. the last word to you. How can India and the UAE shape the new world order sans the traditional global powers? I think what you have to understand is that the United States um, was on the verge of withdrawing from the Middle East when the Hamas attack happened in Israel. So mm. the U.S. has been sucked back into the region. But the United States will not be too unhappy to see that uh, a country like India really establish a relationship with important powers like UAE, Saudi Arabia and Qatar so yes. that the U.S. can concentrate on what it thinks is the main rival, which is China, and Absolutely. also deal with the conflict in Ukraine. Yes. Second, I think the India and Gulf, apart from really sending people there to work and our import of energy, I think the grand bargain is that India will get energy security from Absolutely. these countries and we can give food security to and those countries. That's a very so, important point and this relationship perhaps could ca counter uh, the, the, the China, you know, China's Belt and Road Initiative, as you said, and uh, sort of create a new world order. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for joining us with that. This was a big headline this week. Well, uh, the Prime Minister's big Gulf visit and how it could redefine geopolitics in the years to come. That's it on India Global this week. We'll see you next time, same time and same place.